Hello everyone, my name is Omar Negron, founder and CEO of Remora, an organization dedicated to provide clean water to communities in need while increasing the water quality in our water sources using an innovative water filtration device. But first, let me tell you a story. A story of how water transformed a little small town boy into an entrepreneur and made me the founder of Remora. Let's go back 22 years. I grew up in Corozal, a little small town in the mountains of Puerto Rico, an island known for its unique culture, diverse ecosystems, and nature's most beautiful resources. But behind all that beauty, we have strong-willed people fighting every single day with an economy stuck for more than 10 years, destructive hurricanes, and constant earthquakes. Truly, and unsure and constantly changing environment, someone will say it's impossible to be an entrepreneur. And that's what I believe for a long, long time. My parents started a gas station, a house cleaning company, and a handyman services business. All these companies fail within the first year of operations. I was there as a kid, watching every single move my parents did to pay the bills and put food on our table. I learned from their tenacity and will, and saw a unique, loving, strong, and passionate spirit that moved my family on after every single business failure. But these failures let me discover the value of nature. I bet you wonder why. As a low-income family, we couldn't afford the latest technologies, so we have to create our own solutions at home and our means of entertainment as well. This is how my nearby river became my best partner bringing out my creativity to think outside of the box, creating new toys every single day from natural resources, mixing innovation with nature every time. The turning point for this was 2017, a year I will never forget. I was a sophomore, first generation of college students in my family and participating in my first business. A secondhand clothing store focused on providing a sustainable income for homeless people in Puerto Rico while employing them to work at the store. Here, I acquired my business acumen, management experience, but most importantly, what to do during hard times. A successful first store opened and, and within a year of operations, Hurricane Maria destroyed my island, my, the store, and my home. It was a turbulent time for me, so I decided to go back home with my family to help them rebuild our house. We have lost everything, forcing me and my family to live in a shelter. There, we shared with families that despite losing everything, our main concern was, how are we going to get water today? We had to do long lines every single day, hoping a water truck will arrive. But one day, in that same exact line, I asked myself, what if we can get drinkable water from our nearby rivers without depending on the government? Hard to think, right? That a river that once destroyed my home and my entire community could help us from this and other emergencies. I reconnected once with nature again, remembering my experiences as a, as a child and adapting them to my current reality making Remora Born, a social business primarily focused on six United Nations global goals and managed with a triple bottom effect, empowering individuals through education, creating safe businesses, practices from a clean water source, and being a sustainable solution tackling the water crisis. But well, let's talk a little about water. Water affects, water scarcity affects more than 40% of the global population and is expected to rise. And every, every day, 1,000 children die from a preventable water-related disease. All of this happened while rivers, lakes, and oceans carry the burdens of years of unsustainable practices and climate change, which could affect the everyday life of billions of people. A real need I saw in Puerto Rico, where communities like mine can spend two to three days a week without running water. Solving all these issues may seem impossible to do and can take up millions and millions of dollars to achieve. But as someone who grew up with nothing, I knew not trying was not an option. 
I immerse myself in water and technology forums, meeting with scientists, engineers, biologists, environmental experts, and potential investors to bring out a minimum viable product. Creating partnerships with a design firm in North Carolina and two university systems in Puerto Rico. And recruiting the brightest and smartest people I know, the Remora team. Using our tenacity, will, and innovation, Remora ensure, ensures availability and accessibility for communities in need to clean water, integrating water filtering, water quality monitoring, and bacterial management into one system. Unlike our colleagues in the water filtration world, Remora is one of a kind technology using multiple technologies used to tackle the water crisis at once into one machine. It filters a small debris, microplastics, chemicals, and other biohazards from any water source. The water goes through the filters inside the machine and comes back completely free from bacteria, either to clean the water source being used or an individual can collect water directly from the machine to clean, bake, drink, and serve their basic human needs. Last February, we launched our first prototype in that same exact river that started this whole journey. A successful start that made a huge impact on me and my family. With a savage of a life full of challenges, my father became the lead inventor in the construction process. And my mom, with her unique charisma, oversees all community relations. Now, the entrepreneurship spirit once lost in my home, it's more present than ever before. We have filtered over 600,000 gallons of water in Puerto Rico and provided over 200,000 gallons of water for people to serve their basic human needs. And we continue to create new machines around the island to tackle the water crisis. There we go. As a full-time auditor, a full-time student, and a full-time entrepreneur, I know this may seem impossible to achieve and it's a really, really hard time. But with the help and support of my team, we have raised over $100,000 in capital and got one letter of intent from the government to use Remora in the local water system to serve communities that are not served by the local water system. Now that we are ready to do our next step, a new challenge faced the entire world. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, our product sales have decreased but water is still an issue for many worldwide and essential to fight this pandemic. We have adapted the Remora technologies from machines working directly into, in the rivers into home water filtration devices. So communities in the most rural areas of Puerto Rico can adapt them into their homemade water systems and make sure they never lack access to clean water again. By the end of 2020, we expect to be in over 20 communities in Puerto Rico and impact over 6,000 individuals. And for the next year, we plan to go global, starting in Mexico, India, and the United States. This is my journey that started 22 years ago, learning the value of nature and overcoming challenges, creating partnerships to overcome my weaknesses and becoming a socially conscious entrepreneur that transformed what seemed impossible for me to do into a feasible solution to tackle the water crisis. So our generation and the ones to come never lack access to clean water again. This is my story and the entrepreneur I have become, the model I want to keep innovating and the story I want other kids around the world like me to inspire from. Gracias. What a great story, Omar. I greatly appreciate uh, you, you giving that presentation and, and sharing your story and your vision with us. Uh, and I'm glad that the technology continues to work and it's looking and sounding good. <clears throat> so now we have about 10 minutes for uh, Q&A and who would like to start off for us? Jorge, did I see your hand? Yes, you did. Okay, uh, thank you, Tyler. Omar Pada, great story and congratulations on, on your achievements. Uh, I want to know, given that you talked a lot about your family and your personal journey, uh, a little bit more about the business side. Uh, how's, what's your business model? Are you selling the product? Are you le leasing it? Uh, is this a subscription-based model? Yes, our business model, it's focused on providing a solution 
for companies, uh, NGOs, and government agencies that wants to tackle the water crisis. So we have. Looks like we may have lost Omar. I know the power's gone out a few times there today. We do have a backup plan in case the power does go out that Omar will call into Zoom and we'll get Omar back here with audio. Uh, so we'll pause the clock here momentarily for Omar to, to rejoin. Back. Omar, you're back. I'm back from my phone. The power just went out. We're in the middle of a storm. Um, so should I continue with the first question? Go ahead. Yeah. So um, our business model is focused on providing a sustainable solution for companies, NGOs, and, and government agencies that wants to tackle the water crisis. So we created a product that is focused on helping entire communities. And uh, we, provide, we um, create contracts and specific agreements with these clients. So, and they ask us for a specific amount of machines. We produce them and we install the machines in the communities. And uh, we also train the community on how to use the machine and a, an educational program aside that so people can have a safe interaction with the water sources. Great. Next question, I see Rich uh, Waller's hand. Thanks, Omar, and uh, uh, thank you for your presentation under the circumstances. You've done a fabulous job. Um, this is a big challenge, uh, water um, in our world and all the rest of it, and filtration is not a new science. It's been around for a while. So what sets your product and system apart from competitors? Our system, mostly it's different because we have merged multiple technologies that are being already used in the world into one system. So uh, we filter microplastics, we clean water sources, we provide clean water for people. Uh, if you look uh, into another system, you may have to buy one or two different systems to uh, have all the solutions at the same time. But on top of that, I think something that it's really an advantage for us is that we have the community integrating, integrated as part of the project. We integrate the community and they are the workers. They are the people that are spreading the word about the work we're doing. We are hiring these people as part of Vermont as that we train them. And that's something that is really important for us because it keeps our mission and vision continuing with people that are suffering from the water crisis. Thank you. Amrish, did I see your hand go up? Yep. yep. Thanks, Tyler. Um, continuing from the previous question, uh, uh, firstly, powerful story. You're obviously tackling one of the biggest problems on the planet. Um, so great job. Um, question is, uh, wh why did you feel the need to build a solution from scratch? Did you explore other solutions that exist both in the US and other parts of the world? And second, have you reached out to organizations such as the Gates Foundation and a couple of others that are also working on this? So I felt the need to create this project because I, after the Hurricane Maria, I suffered from not having clean water for more than five months. And even though we had support for um, a lot of companies and a lot of organizations that came here to the island, all of these solutions were short term. It were uh, little filters that will give you water for three or five months, or uh, they were not really building um, a sustainable solution for it, a long term, long term solution, and they were not also changing the reality uh, in, in the interaction of people. So I felt the need to create a machine that was long term for the water filtration issues, especially in countries like Puerto Rico, where we have a poor aquatic infrastructure and we suffer from not having running water every single day. And we also have experienced problem with, uh, with fishing, which is one of the main uh, economic activities here because we don't have clean water sources. And, and uh, I, I just wanted to take action on something that was really close to my heart. And also uh, to, to your second question, we have reached to uh, um, other organizations here in Puerto Rico uh, that are focused on providing clean water and sustainable solutions for people to live a better life. We have established 
a collaboration with the Puerto Rico Aqueduct and Sewer Authority to use Remora in the local water system because we have over 200 communities that are not served by the local water system. And we also have reached uh, organizations in Mexico and India to expand our project and go there and adapt them, adapt each machine to the reality of those countries. Great, Derek. Omar, uh, inspiring story. And I've learned through a lot of projects that in 10 years of being an entrepreneur that your story is is almost important as, as uh, the solution sometimes to get the message across. And you did a great job at that. Um, what I'm curious about is, uh, is that you have been able to do something that billions of children around the world have dreamed of doing, which is you have, you're now the boss over your dad. And so I'd like to know what the hardest part of managing your parents, your dad and your mom is, and um, what you do when, you know, when you have to give them sort of radical, radically candid feedback about work that's not, you know, not, not as good as you hope it to be. Um, I think working with my parents, it's definitely something that I'm really grateful for and very proud of. I have seen how they suffered through the years uh, without every business they wanted to achieve. And um, being that kid that changed their lives, it's something that I, I'm really proud of. And that's, that, that makes everything else easier because I'm giving them an option to work in something that I created and something that they harvest in me from a very young age. Uh, working with family uh, can be tough because you don't want to hurt their feelings, but being family also helps with telling things the way it is. Um, I know I know your potential because I live with you because I've seen your growth. So I think uh, the relationship with ha we have as a family has definitely helped us as a business and has definitely make it easier to manage and give feedback to them. Great, next question. It's our two minute timer. Any other questions for Omar? I, I have another question. Um, Go for it. Uh, Omar, being in uh, Puerto Rico and running this business, do you feel that you, know, you can ultimately run it successfully there and have it, you know, be distributed across the world? Do you feel you will eventually need to be somewhere else? Or how do you think about, uh, you know, the importance of where you're physically located? Um, I think, uh, I think I could definitely be able to manage the business from here. I have acquired great collaborations here that have uh, improved my business uh, since it was just an idea and we have changed the model two or three times. So definitely Puerto Rico, it has been a great environment for startups like me and have given me a lot of options to, to change and develop. Uh, but we are not right now looking into a manufacturing level and a high level manufacturing. And we plan to start here, but we hope that we sell so, so many machines that we have to establish multiple factories in other countries. And if we plan to go global, it's gonna definitely make it easier to install factories in other countries. And also for, for the part that we employ people that we impact, we may have to do manufacturing in some other countries. So people that are being impacted with the project can also be part of the solution. Great. That's probably the remaining part of our time. This is a quick question. Hearing none, uh, Omar, great job. That's a great presentation, great Q&A. Get a you. virtual applause all around. Uh, especially everything uh, going on. You've done an incredible job.